Hey everybody, welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to focus on how to use StatCrunch to calculate quartiles like Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, how to calculate and understand the interquartile range, and how to make a box plot so you can actually see what these quartiles and what this range is representing. So to get started, let's take a look at part of a data set that we're going to use in StatCrunch. So this data set is 10 final exam values or scores that students have taken. And I've taken all 10 of these final exam scores and I've put them in order from smallest to largest. And that's always your first step if you're trying to calculate quartiles by hand. So what I have here is I have that the minimum final exam score is 65%. The highest final exam score, which is your Q4 or your fourth quartile, is a 95%. So what is a quartile? The word quartile comes from the word quarter or 25%. So Q1 is just the value such that 25% of the data is below that value. So in this case, my Q1 is actually a score 68 because 25% of the data in this data set is below the score of 68. The second quartile, or Q2, is actually the same exact value as the median. And we know that to find the median, we put all of our values in order as they are now, and we choose the middle value. And by choosing the middle value, exactly 50%, or one half of the data, will be less than or below that value. However, in this case, we have an even number of values. And so to calculate the median, which is the same as the Q2, we actually take the two values that are on either side of the center, and we take the average of them. The Q3, or the third quartile, is the value such that 75%, or 3 quarters of the data, is below that value. And Q4 is where 100%, or all four quarters of the data, is below that value. The interquartile range is the range between Q3, which in this case is 89%, and Q1, which in this case is 68%. The interquartile range is 50% of your data, but it's the center 50%. So kind of interesting, just different ways to evaluate the data. So this is the data set we're working on, and this is visually how we would find Q1, Q2 or the median, Q3, and Q4, simply by separating our data into quarters. So what we've said so far is in this case, Q1 is the value that has 25% or one quarter of the data below it. Q2 is the same as the median, and so it has 50% or one half of the data below it. Q3 has 75% or three quarters of the data below it, and Q4 has all of the data below it, and so it's the same as the max value. Now how would we do this in StatCrunch, and what would this look like? So here is our same exact data set. Here's all 10 values, and I've actually put them in order in this data set so you can really see that they're the same values. And we're going to use StatCrunch to calculate Q1 through Q4 and the interquartile range, and we're going to make a box plot which shows us what all that looks like, and it's kind of cool to see it visually. So here's our final exam data. In order to get StatCrunch to calculate the quartiles for you, we need to click on Stat, Summary Stats, and then Columns. We choose Columns because the way we have our data organized is column-wise. We have all of our final exam data in the column under the variable final exam. So when I click Columns, I get the box that pops up and says, OK, which one of the variables do you want to make calculations for? And of course you can choose more than one, but in this case we're just looking at the final exam. So that's the only one I'm going to choose. If you want to choose more than one variable, say for a different example, you can use the control button on your computer, or your keyboard I should say, to choose more than one variable. So if I hold down control, I can also select GPA or year, however many variables I want. 
but I don't want these guys. So I'm going to click over here to get rid of them all and then choose final exam. Now I know that I want the core tiles for final exam, but you can see down here under the statistics that are going to be calculated that we have all kinds of goodies here. We have the size of the data set, the mean, the variance, the standard deviation. I don't want all these guys. So I'm just going to click over here under N, which kind of clears this out. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to choose the items that I want. I know that I want the min because that's Q1. I'm sorry, that's the minimum value. I know that I want Q1, so I'm going to scroll down and choose Q1. But if I click Q1 without holding down the control key, it'll replace the other value. And I don't want it to do that. I actually want both values. So I'm going to click on min again, which gives me the smallest value in my data set. Then I'm going to hold down the control key. Or if you're working with a Macintosh computer, you would hold down the command key. So I'll hold down control. Now I can click the first core tile, and it puts it in there for me. I also would like to have the second quartile, which is the median. I want the third quartile. I want the max. And I also want the interquartile range. So once I select all the items that I want, I can then click Compute, which is at the bottom. Let's move this up so we can see that. Once I click Compute, and I can make the output a little bit bigger so I can see it, Everything that I chose for final exam appears here. So my minimum final exam value, and let's compare to the data so we know it's true, the min value is 65. The first quartile is the value such that 25% of the data is below it. That's 68, and you can see that about 25 or one quarter of the data is below this value. The median is the center of my data in order. And remember, my data is all in order. That's unusual, and most of the time your data will not be in order. This will still work the same exact way, but to really visualize it, if you take your data and put it in order, you'll be able to compare this a little bit more easily. So the median is 75 and a half. Our Q3 is 89, so that three quarters of the data is below it. Our max value is 95, and my interquartile range is 21. And the reason for that is that below, between 68 and 89, and actually let me show you this because this will be more visual. My Q1 is 68, my Q3 is 89. So the interquartile range is Q3, which is 89, minus Q1, minus 68. 89 minus 68 is 21. And that's the value of the interquartile range. And so that's where that number comes from. So what we discovered here is that our median was our Q2 and came out exactly as we expected, as 75 and a half. And our interquartile range is the range between Q3 and Q1, which is 21. So let's go back to StatCrunch now. So we have all of these values. We have our min, Q1, our median. We have Q3, our max, and the interquartile range. We also know that 50% of the scores are somewhere between 68 and 89. That's the key also to the interquartile range. We know that 50% of our values are between Q1 and Q3. Now let's take a better look at this visually, and we can do that by creating a graph. So if we click on graph, and we go down to box plot, and we choose box plot, we can come over and say, okay, let's choose our final exam as our variable, and let's just build a basic box plot. We're not going to do anything fancy with it, we're just going to compute the box plot for final exam. And when we do that, we get all the same results that we just saw for our minimum, so that's 65, our maximum value, 95, our median, or Q2, is right here at 75 and a half, our Q3 is right up here somewhere around, I think we said it was around 89, and our Q1, somewhere around 68. So this box plot shows you the max, the min, it shows you Q1, Q3, 
It shows you the median, which is Q2, and this big blue part is the interquartile range, where 50% of the data exist. So that's an example of how to use StatCrunch to calculate Q1 through Q4, the interquartile range, and a box plot to view those values. Thank you for joining me.